my name is Jefferson Garcia and I am one of the students that went on the SSTA 2016. Uh, I'm Kara Plu. I'm a part-time student here at SUNY Albany in the Masters of Social Work program and I got to go on Dr. Miller's summer study tour to Africa this year. Everybody, I'm Gordon. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the video that you're about to watch. So we're students who went um, to Africa with Dr. Miller and we went to South Africa, Tanzania, and Zanzibar to study social work policy around HIV, gender rights, child welfare, and we touched on different topics. The lack of human dignity experienced by Africans is the direct result of the policy of white supremacy. White supremacy implies black inferiority. Legislation designed to preserve white supremacy entrenches this notion. My research was initially inspired by the great Nelson Mandela, his ideals particularly my question around poverty in South Africa. I wanted to learn what their funding looked like, whether, especially non-governmental organization, whether it came in the form of a foundation, aid, or donation, and whether or not that would actually be a sustainable form of funding for each organization and each entity. We visited several universities, including the University of Western Cape, the University of Cape Town, Stellenbosch University, and the University of South Africa. And within these universities, we have really critical conversations about what my research is based on and what sustainable economic development would look like for South Africa and NGOs and funding towards social services, especially HIV-related uh, <coughs> services and the HIV the epidemic. The Treatment Action Campaign was a really inspiring organization, non-governmental organization that was led by passionate people that fought for rights, HIV rights, HIV-related services, and they, but they weren't really for governmental funding. They kind of refused government funding, and that was really interesting for me to see how they actually sustained themselves, where they got their funding, and what examples they had um, in regards to NGOs that actually did receive government funding and how they received their funding, whether it was a donation, a foundation, again, or aid. The aid that I found that was most common within these non-governmental organizations was PEPFAR. PEPFAR fueled my research question. PEPFAR kind of led my research question and gave me a lot of really great answers in regards to my question related to sustainable economic development. The mentor mother program especially gave me a great example of what it was like for an organization to have this funding but then have it stripped from them as soon as they kind of started seeing some progress. And so then my question to them was where are you getting your funding? How are you sustaining? And their response was the government. So they did receive government funding. They did accept uh, government funding and they were accepting of donations and aid. But PEPFAR was pulled out at one point. How else did they get their funding? They had a local gift shop where the mothers who received services could actually work on site, make gifts and sell them to visitors like us. That was really, really inspiring to me. It, it, it was just a very welcoming, warming place, a tight-knit community made up of community workers that went out in, onto the, into the field, uh, help mothers and families within the community and continue their passion and fuel the work with Nelson Mandela's ideals again. The common theme throughout my visit in South Africa. And uh, it's one thing that I will never forget, and to say the very least, a life changing experience for me. Girl. 
I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. Most of my experience in social work so far has been on the micro level. So going over into Africa with Dr. Miller and the students for the advanced policy course, I was able to get direct exposure to the macro level of social work. And a lot of that was social justice and the advocacy that we saw with um, Dr. Teresa and Mohammed in Tanzania. And I was able to see a direct correlation with need and advocacy. So you could see how there were so many injustices, there were so many needs, of course. I had direct exposure to policy and that piece of social work where it's the social justice and advocacy and how culture had a direct influence on policy and where the government placed a heavy funding and, and influence and where they saw the need at. So my question was, how will this be implemented in serving the clients or serving those that we meet in the hospitals or in, when talking to Mohammed, those that he is working with for, for prevention with young MSM. And talking to Dr. Teresa and going to some of the agencies and meeting with stakeholders, we, were, we got the, the notion that the government doesn't see a, a need or, to me, a respected, uh, doesn't see social work as a respected profession. So they're, they place money in taking nursing initiatives and funding that where the need is in social work. So Dr. Teresa d is trying to develop uh, and make it known that social work is here in Tanzania and it is, we have a school and you can further develop your career as a social worker, but also making it a respectable profession. So that's one piece of it, but also working with uh, or meeting with Muhammad and voices and seeing how culture, MSM is unacceptable according to the constitution in, in Tanzania. So his program that he was working with had fallen by the wayside because it's not funded by the government, but also it was robbed. He couldn't take it to the authorities and he couldn't take proper steps because it's not seen as a proper or a, 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 a good service to pre for prevention in MSM. And it's illegal, so he's unable to actually go to the police or go to the government or, you know. So he was left with a hope and a dream. Welcome to Zanzibar. Zanzibar 
Zanzibar allowed us to further examine the provision of social policies in the areas of HIV and child welfare. One of the places that we went to was St. Monica School, which is located in Zanzibar. Um, this is a school that parents must pay a yearly tuition for their students to go to, um, but because they pay tuition and they um, may seem like they have more money, some of them are still economically disadvantaged. Um, one of the big things that we noticed was that when talking with the teachers and the headmaster of the school, that a lot of the students don't aren't able to get meals at home, aren't able to have breakfast before they come in, and aren't able to bring lunch and all of that. So the headmaster and the teachers put carpets down outside of the schools um, where the kids sit and eat their porridge and their you know their porridge and, and their tortilla shell and kind of just all got to hang out and, and, and do breakfast. Um, and I was able to sit down and have, have breakfast with them, which I'm sure you could tell I had a great time doing. Zanzibar has two major religious practices, Christianity and Islam. In conversations with various stakeholders at the State University of Zanzibar, Tanzania Health Promotion Support, and the Zanzibar Department of Social Services, as well as St. Monica's as mentioned before, led us to believe the value that is placed on religion and the importance of religion and cultures. Um, and the stakeholders in those different agencies kind of explained that they think that culture and the values that people have is why the HIV rates are so low in Zanzibar compared to Tan Tanzania and other countries as well. Um, this all ties into the social work policies that guide where funding gets placed from donors and where financial limitations on access to HIV medications are placed as well. Love.